What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you about similar triangles, all right? So similar triangles are just two triangles that are the exact same shape, but are just different sizes, okay? So as you can see, triangle ABC here and triangle DEF are the same shape, right? But they're different sizes. DEF is smaller than ABC, okay? And the way that you know these two triangles are the exact same shape is that they have to have the exact same angles. So here, angle A matches or corresponds to angle D, okay? Up here, angle B matches or corresponds to angle E. And then here, angle C corresponds to angle F, okay? So since they have the exact same angles, they are the exact same shape. Okay, and when there's two angles that are the exact same size, we call them congruent, okay? Congruent angles just mean the same angle. It's just a fancy way of saying that it's the same exact angle. Okay, and since they're the exact same shape, there's some cool things we can do with their sides to relate them to one another, okay? So this side, side AB, matches or corresponds to side DE. And then side BC also matches or corresponds to side EF. And then lastly, this side down here, AC, corresponds to side DF. Okay, so since they're similar triangles, that means they're proportional. And since they're proportional, we can set up ratios between their sides. Okay, so we can say that the ratio of AB, right, AB over DE, the corresponding side, is equal to the ratio of the other sides. So BC over EF. And again, set that equal to the last ratio down here, AC over DF. Okay, and one last thing I want to mention is when you do have two similar triangles, the way you would write that is, so in this example, I would say triangle ABC, and this is the symbol for triangle, so I would say triangle ABC is similar. So that's the symbol for saying it's similar to triangle DEF, okay, to triangle DEF. Okay, so now that we know that we can relate their sides to one another, let me show you how we would solve for a missing side. Okay, so here we have triangle FAT and triangle PIG, and I'm telling you that these are similar triangles, okay? So again, that means their angles are the exact same, right? So I could say angle F right here and angle P are congruent angles. And then I can say up here, angle A and angle I are corresponding angles. They're congruent angles. Okay, and then lastly, angle G right here and angle T are corresponding. Okay, and let's say we had the sides right here. Let's say this side FT was 12. Let's say this side FA was 9 and then AT right here. Let's just call this X, okay? And then right here on this triangle, PIG, let's say this side is eight, this side is four, and then this side, PI, we'll call Y. So how would we solve for the missing sides right here? So we're gonna have to set up a proportion. So that means we're gonna have a fraction equal to another fraction, okay? And in our fraction, this is where we relate the, ratio, the sides to one another and set up a ratio, okay? So Again, the, this bottom side, FT, is corresponding or corresponds to side PG, right? So I could say 12 corresponds to 8. And then that's going to be equal to, and then we can use this side, AT, which is X, right? Corresponds to side IG, which is 4. Okay, so now we have a proportion. And in order to solve this proportion, all you have to do is cross multiply. Okay, so eight times X is eight X, and then you're gonna set that equal to your other cross, 12 times four, and 12 times four is 48. Okay, so solving for X right here, you just have to divide by eight on both sides. Okay, then these eights cancel out, so we're just left with X is equal to 48 divided by eight, which is six. Okay, so then you just solve for that side, X is equal to six. So this side right here, x is equal to 6. 
Okay, so we solved for x, now let's solve for y. So I'm just going to move this to the side. Okay, so again, we're going to have to set up a proportion to solve for y right here. So that means I'm going to have a fraction equal to another fraction. Okay, and one way you can kind of think about filling out this, the, the ratios is in the numerator, you're going to have the information from your first triangle, and then in the denominator, you're going to have the information from your second triangle, okay? T1, T2, these are two common ways you can kind of label your triangles. Okay, so again, use a ratio that you already know. So again, we'll use this one. So FT is 12, and that corresponds to side PG, which is 8. And then we're going to set this equal to, well, the side that we're looking for. So in this case, we're going to have to use this side, right? FA, which is 9. And then that's going to go over the corresponding side, PI, which is Y, right? Which is what we're looking for. Okay, so now we have our proportion. So again, all you have to do is cross multiply. So we have 12 times Y right there. And then we're going to set that equal to our other cross, 8 times 9, which is 72. Okay, so then solving for Y right here, you're just going to divide by 12 on both sides. Then these 12s cancel out. So then on this side, we're just left with Y is equal to 72 divided by 12, which is equal to 6. Okay, so then your answer right here, should have done in blue, but Y is equal to 6. Okay, so 6 is equal to Y right there. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too bad, but let me do one more example where the triangle, one of the triangles anyways, is rotated. Okay, so in this example, we have two right triangles, but I'm telling you that triangle BIG, this one on the left, is similar to triangle KAT, this one on the right. Okay, but as you can see, they are not lined up the same way, right? This one is kind of horizontal, and then this one's lined up more vertically. But it's important to realize that it doesn't matter. If one is rotated or anything flipped upside down, it doesn't matter. They, they can still be similar triangles. So here we know angle I corresponds to angle A, right? And then we also know angle B, this skinny little angle, is going to correspond to angle K, this skinny little angle. And then that means angle G is going to correspond with angle T. Okay, and let's also write some side lengths. So we'll say this is 4, this is 5, and again, we'll just call this X. And then on this side, we'll say that this is Y. We'll call this one down here 12, and this one right here, the hypotenuse, we'll call 20. Now, how do you know which sides correspond to one another? Well, an easy way you can do that is just basing it off the angles. So, for example, we know that angle B right here and angle K up here are corresponding angles, right? So all you have to do is see what side that this angle opens up to. And you can just draw a straight line basically from it. And so you can see if you draw a straight line, we hit the X, right? So then if you do it the same thing right here, just draw a straight line off of it, we'll hit 12. So that means this side right here, GI, corresponds to this side right here, AT. Okay, so knowing that, let's set up a proportion, write it on this side over here. So some fraction is equal to another fraction, right? And then remember, on top goes your information of one triangle, and then on the bottom goes the information of your other triangle. Okay, so based off of what we just found, we know that this side with the X corresponds to this side with the 12, right? So X and 12. Okay, so what's going to go in our other ratio right here? Well, the other one we can find is based off this 90 degree angle, right? Because this one opens up to the 5, so side BG. And then on this side, the 90 degree angle opens up, just drawing it straight across, to the 20, okay? So then I know this side, BG, and this side, KT, are corresponding sides, right? So we can use their side lengths, right? So then here we have 5, and again, that goes on top. And then here we have 20. Okay, so our proportion is set up, so now we can cross multiply, right? So 12 times 5, that's equal to 60, and then we're going to set that equal to our other cross here, 20 times x. Okay, so solving for x right here, I'm going to divide by 20 on both sides. Okay, so then the 20s on this side cancel out, so we're just left with x is equal to 60 divided by 20, which is equal to 3. Okay, so then right here, x is equal to 3.
Okay, and now lastly, solving for y right here. Again, we have to set up a proportion, so a fraction equal to another fraction, right? So we can use this same proportion that we just used. So we could use the 5 over the 20. Okay, and then on this side, I know my y goes on the bottom, right? Because the bottom is where I put the t2 information, and on top is where I put the t1 information. Okay, so what side correlates to y right here? Well, it'd be the last number we haven't used for, right? Or the other way you can see that is this angle, the double angle, opens up straight to the y, and then on this side, the double angle opens up straight to the 4, okay? So then we have 4 over y. So then solving for y right here, again, we're just going to cross multiply. So 4 times 20, that's equal to 80, and then I'm going to set that equal to y times 5, or 5y, right? Okay, so solving for y right here, we're going to divide by 5 on both sides. Okay, so these 5s cancel out, so we're just left with y is equal to 80 divided by 5, which is 16. Okay, so 16 is equal to y. So right here, this side, ka, would be equal to 16. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful, so definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.